Hello, my dear students. Good evening. My name is Vipin Mishra, and I welcome you all on this foundation course of IMS Gate Academy, in which we are discussing a very difficult subject, EMFT. One of such nightmares for all the EC electrical and IN students. But you know, if you have got your foundation right, this subject is something that you are going to enjoy while imagining the things in 3D space. When it comes to subjects like EMFT, it, it involves a lot of imagination. And if you want to ima imagine those things, you should be very clear with the coordinate system. And that's the purpose of this lecture. So in this lecture and the upcoming lecture, we will try to understand the coordinate system we are going to use in EMFT. This is going to be the second lecture. In first lecture, we have just done the orientation about EMFT and we discussed that what is this MFT, what we are going to study in MFT, how it has involved, okay, how it has evolved, the subject, the weightage and the founda in foundation, what we are actually going to discuss. So I discussed with the, uh, the lecture plan as well. So first lecture is there in the playlist, you can go and watch it again. You will get a knowledge about AMFT, what actually MFT is all about and what you should be studying in that. And this is going to be the second lecture. So in second and third lecture, we are trying to understand the coordinate system because in EMFT, whether it is electrostatic, magnetostatic or it is time varying electromagnetic field, we have to be very good in imagination, imagining the things in 3D space and for that you should be able to understand the coordinate system very well. Okay, so let's get started with the coordinate system and before that, if you want to get regular feeds about the lectures that we are taking, the lecture note that you if you want to receive on time, okay, and if you really want to get a, a feed about the PSUs and other government job notification, the post gate guidance about IITs and IITs and PSUs, just join our telegram channel, okay. And that's how you will keep yourself updated about the gate preparation and everything related to gate as well. So this is the link. The link is also given in the description box. You can join our telegram channel to be up uh, for, for being updated. So guys, if we talk about coordinate system, okay, we will be talking about electromagnetic fields in EMFT subject and the field, you know, is a spatial dis, uh, distribution in 3D space. So we'll be having a point and we need to represent that point in 3D space. So there are three ways through which we can represent a point in 3D space. Let us suppose that this is the point I want to represent. So this is the point which I want to represent. One possible way is that I will be coming to a distance. I will be traveling some distance in X and I will be traveling some distance towards a Y in x y plane and I will be traveling some distance z and in this way I can reach to this point okay and I'm moving in anti-clockwise direction like this just see I'm following a right hand system so this is how I can go to this point okay so if I'm moving some distance x equals to a like this y equals to b and some distance like z equals to c in this way if I'm moving x y z this coordinate system will be known as the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, this system will be known as the Cartesian system. Now the alternative will be, just see what I am doing here, I am moving some distance in x, some distance in y and some distance I am moving in the jet plane. Now instead of moving x, y distance, just see what I have done earlier, I have moved some distance on x axis some distance in y direction okay in x y plane like this and then I have went to the point by following some distance z in this direction like that I have done okay just see I have moved some distance x like this then I have moved some distance y like this and then I have moved some distance z like this isn't it so guys, instead of first going some distance x in x direction, positive x direction, then some distance y in positive y direction, why don't we come directly towards this point, isn't it? This is also one such possible way. 
why are you traveling some x distance and some y distance and then you are traveling some z distance and going to the point instead of that why don't you come to this point directly isn't it so if you are doing that if you are coming to this point directly okay phi by traveling some distance r by an angle phi from the positive x direction okay instead of following x and y like this which we are doing earlier in coordinate system which is called as cartesian system why don't we come directly from this point to this point so that we can avoid traveling this extra distance isn't it and while doing that when i'm coming to this point i'm traveling in positive from positive x direction i have moved an angle phi like this isn't it i have moved an angle phi then what you can what i can do i can travel to this distance z and i can reach to this point then what are the points what are the variables that i am looking here the my variables will be r my variable will be phi and my variable will be z okay i am still traveling some distance z here okay so just see in xy plane what i have done in xy plane whatever the point you want to represent just draw the per foot of perpendicular of that point on xy plane okay then travel this particular distance r from the center and then after traveling this distance r just go to that point so your coordinate will be r phi z and this coordinate system if you are doing so this coordinate system is known as the cylindrical system if you are doing like this you will be following cylindrical coordinate system okay this distance r you should have chosen in this way that you will draw a foot of perpendicular of the point in xy plane and you have moved an angle phi from the positive x axis okay don't forget this because you could have moved in this direction and then you could have travel to that point this is also possible but we will not be doing that phi measurement should be from the positive x axis towards the foot of perpendicular of the point in the xy plane this is what you have to remember so one such way of reaching to the point another such way of reaching to the point the next possible way is just see this is this was the point that we wanted to represent here okay so let me represent the point again so this was the point okay this was the point this is my point which i wanted to represent here now what i can do just see i can directly go to this point as well yes or no i can just go to this point directly as well okay so i have to travel a distance r and this distance when i'm traveling i have to be very clear with you thing that first of all i have to draw the foot of perpendicular of this point in x y plane again then i have to travel some this just see this is x y plane that i have okay so this is my x y plane i have to draw the foot of perpendicular of this point in x y plane then i have to reach towards this foot of perpendicular and when i am doing that i am traveling some angle phi from the positive x axis okay and i am moving from positive z towards the point and that angle i am calling to be theta okay so just see this is one such possible way and how i am moving here i am dropping the foot of perpendicular in xy plane then i am reaching to that point and i am calling this dis, uh, i am calling this distance to be the similar to what we have in cylindrical coordinate system okay the distance will be r now see i am dropping a foot of perpendicular and i am reaching to this point foot of foot of perpendicular by traveling some angle phi from the positive x axis okay and i will be traveling to my points in this direction only i could have travel to my point in this way as well okay my point can be here as well so i have to be very clear in my mind that how i am traveling towards this point so how i am traveling towards this point from this point i can reach this point directly by traveling some distance r okay from the positive z axis z axis i am moving towards the point by an angle theta okay i could have travel towards this side as well so i have to be very clear that i have to be traveling in from positive x direction by making an angle phi towards the foot of perpendicular of the point this is how i have to travel so what are the variables right now we have r we have phi and sorry we have r we have theta and we have phi so just see if you are following this system 
your coordinate system will be known to be the spherical system okay the spherical coordinate system so just see the point is same but there are three ways through which you can represent this y travel some distance x travel some distance in y travel some distance z in positive x y z direction like this we have uh, represented here and just see we are following the right handed system here okay anti clockwise system here so like that if you will do it will be your uh, cartesian system instead of traveling this x and y distance we could have reached to this point directly okay let me call this point to be q point so we could have reached this point q directly instead of traveling x and y we could have reached to this point directly this point represent the foot of perpendicular of this point which we want to travel which we want to represent okay so we could have reached to this foot of perpendicular of this point on x y plane directly by traveling some distance r from the positive x direction like measuring uh, uh, pointing this angle phi in this way if you are following this system it will be known as cylindrical system so we have r we have phi and we have z okay this z and this z are similar to each other another way is why don't you directly go to this point isn't it why you are following these two system just go to this point directly from this center so if you are doing this so if we if you are going directly towards this point by making an angle theta from the positive z axis towards the point okay and the direction of traveling will be draw a foot of perpendicular in the x y plane okay and move an angle phi from the positive x direction okay so following anti clockwise system this is how you should be moving to while traveling towards the point because this point could have been in this direction okay in that case you should be traveling like this which is wrong we have to follow this right handed system like this so there are three ways you can reach towards the point and it gives rise to three coordinate system cartesian cylindrical spherical system okay we will discuss each one in detail so as we can see there are three coordinate system that we have cartesian system cylindrical system and spherical system okay in cartesian system the coordinates will be x y z in cylindrical system the coordinates will be r phi z and similarly in spherical system the coordinates will be r theta and phi okay you will see some people write it rho that is the same thing these coordinate system are orthogonal okay in which the coordinates are mutually perpendicular to each other okay the coordinates are mutually perpendicular to each other these are orthogonal system the coordinates will be mutually perpendicular to each other and will be following the right hand rule okay we will be following the right hand rule while representing this coordinate system so let us discuss the cartesian coordinate system first of all okay and before you move into this point let me write a very important point here any point if we want to represent in any coordinate system is just the intersection of three planes okay so very important point any point in any coordinate system is intersection of three planes okay it is intersection of three planes what will be the three planes if you are following the cartesian coordinate system those three planes will be x equals to constant or we can say y z plane okay and we will be having y equals to constant or we can say z x plane okay similarly we can have z equals to constant or what we can call it x y plane so just see three planes when they will be intersecting with each other it will give it will be uh, represented like a point okay similarly what will be the three planes here so we will be having one plane which is r equals to constant another plane plane will be phi equals to constant here and another plane will be z equals to constant so these are the three planes when they will intersect with each other 
it will be a representation of point in cylindrical coordinate system. Similarly, here what are the three points? R equals to constant, theta equals to constant and phi equals to constant. Okay. So, here R equals to constant represents the radius of the cylinder. Okay. Here R equals to constant represents the radius of the sphere. Theta equals to constant represent the cone. Okay, and we have phi equals to constant as well. So, we will discuss all these things in details. The important point what you can take from here is any point in any coordinate system is just intersection of three planes. Okay. For example, if we talk about Cartesian coordinate system. So, just see what do we call this point? Just see this point is origin. At origin, we will be having x equals to 0, we will be having y equals to 0 we will be having z equals to 0. As we move from x in the increasing x direction in this way, okay. So, let us suppose that we have traveled some distance. Let us suppose that we have traveled some distance of some x equals to a and we have reached towards this point, okay. So, if suppose we have traveled some distance x in increasing x direction, okay. So, at this point we are having x equals to a. Let me call this x equals to a or we can call it x equals to constant. So, x equals to constant, what it will represent? It will represent a plane, okay, which we can call yz plane, okay. x equals to 0 is what? yz plane. Now, your yz plane is shifting towards the increasing x direction. So, what do we call it? We can call it yz plane. Similarly, just see it. Here we have moved some distance y equals to b or we can say y equals to constant. Now, what y equals to 0 represent? It represent x z plane. So, your x z plane from 0 it has moved some distance b. So, what is this? This is called as x z plane. Okay. Similarly, just see here. What do we have here? We have z equals to c or we can say z equals to constant. What z equals to 0 will represent? It represent x y plane. On x y plane, the value of z will be 0. So, x y plane, earlier it was at 0, now it is moving towards the increasing z direction if we have z equals to c. So, your x y plane have moved to a distance z equals to c. So, what is this? This is called as x y plane as well. Okay. Three separate planes we have shown. Now, let us consider that three separate planes have intersected with each other. Okay? They are coming closer to each other and when they have intersected, they will be representing a point which we have represented by P. Okay? So, any point P will be just the intersection of three planes. What do we call this plane? So, just see this plane is basically x y plane. Sorry, this plane is basically y z plane. Okay. What do we call this plane? So, this plane will be x z plane or z x plane. Let me call this x z plane. This will be x z plane. What is this plane? So, this plane will be what? This plane will be x y plane. On this plane, we will be getting the value of x a constant. On this plane, we will be getting the value of y a constant. Okay. On this plane, we will be getting the value of z to be a constant. Okay? And if we represent the unit vector, so unit vectors are all, always represented in the increasing direction of a vector. So, just see, this is x direction, so unit vector will be in the increasing direction of x. So, we will represent the unit vector x in this way. This will be unit vector x, then this will be unit vector y and this will be the unit vector z. Okay. Similarly, for this point which we have represented when three planes have intersected with each other, this point might be represented by any coordinate p, x, y, z. Okay. Just see, we have traveled some distance, we have traveled some distance x, we have traveled some distance y and we have traveled some distance x, z and then only we have reached towards this point. Okay. So, just see, we have traveled some distance x, we have traveled some distance y and we have traveled some distance z and we have reached towards this point in this way. This is how a point is represented.
So what I was saying is that a point in any coordinate system is just an intersection of three planes. Okay. What are the three planes here in Cartesian coordinate system? X, Y, Y, Z and Z, X plane. This is how we will represent a point in Cartesian coordinate system. So the unit vector in the increasing x direction, it will be unit vector x. In the increasing y direction, it will be unit vector y. In the increasing z direction, it will be unit vector z. Now, if you see this plane, okay, if you see this plane, which we are representing with x equals to constant or whom we are calling yz plane, okay. So, on to this plane, which is right now in front of you, what is the unit vector normal to it? So, the unit vector normal to it will be unit vector x, okay. So, the plane is yz plane and the unit vector normal to it will be unit vector x. Just see this plane, okay, this plane which is placed like this. On this plane, if you see, this is xz plane, y equals to constant and what is the unit vector normal to this plane? The unit vector normal to this plane is unit vector y. Now see this upper plane, okay, z equals to constant or xy plane. What is the unit vector normal to it? So the unit vector normal to this is unit vector z, okay. So just see, unit vector z will be the normal to this vector, this surface, okay. So this is how a point is represented in Cartesian coordinate system. Now if suppose we are moving from one point to another point, three surfaces are there when they have intersected, they are making a point P, okay. Now at the point P, the coordinates are X, Y, Z. Let us suppose when the three surfaces are intersecting, they will bound some, sur three surfaces are there, so when they will be intersecting, they will bound some volume as well, okay. So just see, when three surfaces might be intersecting here like this, they are forming some kind of a structure like this. If suppose we are moving from one point to another point, if suppose we are moving from P to Q in this way. So let us suppose while moving from P to Q, my coordinates have changed from X plus DX, Y plus DY and Z plus G, DZ means I have traveled some distance, I have traveled some distance DY, I have traveled some distance DZ and I have traveled some distance d of x, okay. I have traveled some distance d of x while moving from p to q, okay. So I was there in the point p. I have moved from p to q in this structure like this, which this structure is being made when three planes have intersected, okay. So I am moving from point p to q and this structure is having six, uh, surfaces this structure is bounding some volume as well. When I am moving from any point P to Q, I am travelling some differential length DL, okay. I am travelling some differential length DL. Now how to write this differential length? So this differential length, this differential length might be written as, just see, we are moving some distance DX in X direction, we are moving some distance Y in Y direction, we are moving some distance Z in z direction. This is how we will represent the differential length, okay. Now if I ask you that what will be the volume bounded by this structure, then what is the volume? It is forming some cube kind of a structure, isn't it? So volume will be, what will be the volume? Volume of this cuboid will be dx, dy and dz, isn't it? LBH is what you know. So it will be dx, dy and dz. Volume is what? Volume is scalar quantity. So, we will write it like that. Now, it is bounding surfaces as well. So, it is bounding three surfaces, okay. And how many surfaces are there? Total six surfaces will be there. Just see, this front one surface and the surface just opposite to that, okay. What is the unit vector normal to this front surface? Unit vector x. What is the unit vector normal to the back of this surface? Minus unit vector x, isn't it? So, my first surface will be just see this surface that you can see here, okay. This surface that you can see, just see this particular surface. So what are the uh, two arms of this surface, okay. So the two arms of this rectangular surface are dy and dz. So area you are calculating, so what will be the area? Two arms are dy and dz, multiply them and what is the unit vector normal to it? 
if we are considering this upper face the unit vector normal will be unit vector x if we are considering this back face the unit vector normal will be minus of unit vector x so why don't we write here plus minus so this will be the first surface okay this surface is basically the representing x equals to constant surface x equals to constant surface this surface is representing x equals to constant surface or it is representing y z plane this is what we can say here okay similarly we have another area now look into this face okay just see can you look into this surface if you look into this surface what are the two arms of this surface dx and dz and what is the unit vector normal to this surface unit vector y so the two arms that we have are dx and dz and the unit vector normal is unit vector y when you are taking this surface and when you are choosing this face of the surface the unit vector normal will be minus of unit vector i y okay so front face and the back face front face will have plus unit vector i unit vector y and the back face will be having minus of unit vector y so this is the second surface okay what is this surface this surface is representing some y equals to constant or we can say x z plane okay now see this top surface and this bottom surface so if you are on the top surface what are the two arms that we have two arms will be dy and dx isn't it so if we are on this surface the two arms are dy and dx okay so we can write it dx dy what is the unit vector normal to this top surface unit vector z and what will be the unit vector normal to this bottom surface opposite to unit vector z which will be minus of i z so we can write plus minus unit vector z okay now if you look into this top surface what do we have here in this top surface we are having z equals to constant value or it is representing it is representing what it is representing x y plane okay just see this is this is what this is z equals to constant surface okay what is this this is y equals to constant surface what is this this front face that you have this front face represent x equals to constant surface and they have their back face as well okay so just see from this coordinate system what we can say we can represent some differential length if you are moving from one point to another point a point is represented by intersection of three planes in any coordinate system here the planes are x y y z and z x plane if you are moving from one point to another point we are traveling some differential length and that differential length is given by this vector differential volume bounded by intersection of the surfaces will be just the multiplication of three lengths that we are traveling dx dy dz differential surfaces you can write in this way okay so this is what we have in coordinate cartesian coordinate system so just see we have traveled some distance x we have traveled some distance y we have traveled some distance z and this is how we are representing any position vector r okay so if this point is o so my position vector will be vector o a or vector a and vector a might be having some x component okay vector a might be having some y component in y direction and it will be having some z component in z direction like this so the component in x direction will be ax unit vector x component in y direction will be ay unit vector y component in z direction will be az unit vector z and any position vector any point is just addition of all these three vectors okay this is how we will be representing the position vector so what are the coordinates of point a we can write them 0 0 0 okay so if i am representing oa with a position vector r with a position vector r then my vectors will be just see what we have to do subtract o from a okay so subtract point o coordinates from a so how i will be doing that i will be doing x minus 0 unit vector x i will be doing y minus 0 unit vector y 
and I will be doing z minus 0 unit vector z or it will be x unit vector x, y unit vector y or z unit vector z. So, any vector in Cartesian coordinate system it will be having it can be written like this ax unit vector x, ay unit vector y and az unit vector z and the position vector, position vector involves origin. The distance of a vector a point from the origin is known as original uh, position vector. It will be x unit vector x, y unit vector y and z unit vector z. So, this is the learning that we can take. Okay? And whenever we are writing a differential length vector, what we have to do here? Subtract the second point coordinate, first point coordinate from the second point coordinate. Just see what we have done. We are writing O A. Okay? We are writing O A. Uh, it will be O P here, not O A. O P. Okay? So, we are writing O P. So, O P will be, we will subtract coordinate of O from coordinate of P. Okay? So, this is how position vector will be represented. If suppose we have to represent some distance vector, means there is no involvement of origin. So, we have just see two vectors. Let me call this A. If I am calling this vector to be A, what is this vector A? Position of this point P, position vector of uh, position vector OP we can say. Okay? So, position vector OP is basically vector A and position vector OQ is vector B. Okay? Then what will be my RPQ? So, as per the vector subtraction vector addition, you can say that this will be B minus A. Okay? So, if we have two position vector and we have to write the resultant vector, this is how you will be doing the things. So, what is this RPQ, the resultant vector which we are getting to be B minus A and what is B minus A? B minus A is basically position vector OP minus position vector, sorry, position vector OQ minus position vector OP. Okay? So, just see. This position vector, hello Yash, this position vector OP is having coordinate x1, y1, z1. Q is having coordinate x2, y2, z2. We are writing RPQ, okay, which is B minus A. So, we will be subtracting position vector B from po uh, position vector A from position vector B. So, how I will be writing this x2 minus x1 unit vector x, I will be writing y2 minus y1 unit vector y and z2 minus z1 unit vector z. Okay? Like this. So, the kind of vector RP that we have here, okay, it is representing sub, uh, subtraction of two vector and when you are subtracting two vector, the lower diagonal of the parallelogram is representing the subtraction. We discussed this in first lecture of foundation course. So, we are using the same concept and we can write the distance vector in this way. So, this is how the distance vector might be represented in Cartesian coordinate system. Hello, yes. Do you have any question to answer? Ask. Okay. So, this is just see. Position vector means the distance of the vector point with respect to origin. Distance vector means we have two position vector and where we are finding the distance between them. Okay. So, this is position and distance vector concept that you should understand. So, in order to, if suppose we are summarizing Cartesian coordinate system, what we have learned that any point is located by x, y, z coordinates. Okay. So, if suppose there is any point, how we will locate this point? We will travel some distance x, we will travel some distance y, we will travel some distance z like this and this is how we will be reaching to this point. So, any point might be represented with x, y, z coordinates. And a point is an intersection of three surfaces. We know those surfaces are x equals to constant or yz plane, zx plane and xy plane like that we have discussed. Okay? So, these surfaces are x constant, y constant, z constant. x constant means yz plane. Okay? y constant means zx plane or xz plane. Okay? z constant means xy plane. 
okay corresponding corresponding to this point there will be three unit vectors unit vector x y z in x y z increasing x y z direction any vector in cartesian coordinate system might be represented with their x y and z component in this way okay this is what we have seen in cartesian coordinate system i hope you guys have understood this without any problem okay important learning that we have is any point in any coordinate system is represented by the intersection of three planes okay now let's move into the cylindrical coordinate system okay so in cartesian coordinate system first we were traveling some distance x then we were traveling some distance y okay first we were traveling some distance x then we were traveling some distance y like this then we have decided why we are moving some distance x first then distance y first why don't we come to this point let me call this o let me call this point to be uh, a point okay so why we are come traveling first some distance x then some distance y and we are coming to this point o instead of that why don't we come from o to a directly yes we can come from o to a directly by traveling some distance r from positive x direction okay this is to be very clear from positive x direction so how i am coming to this point let me call this point to be a so instead of traveling x traveling some y let us come to uh, directly to this point a from this point o by traveling some distance some angle phi from the positive x axis okay we are following right handed system so from the positive x axis we will be moving good evening from the positive x axis we are moving in some positive x phi direction like this okay and we will draw the foot of perpendicular of this particular point which we want to reach in xy plane okay this is xy plane that we have so in this xy plane what do we do we will draw a foot of perpendicular of this point okay then we will reach this point from this center directly by moving an angle phi from positive x axis and this is how we will reach towards this point thank you thank you so much okay this is how we will reach towards this point so z direction we were traveling some distance z equals to constant which we are doing here as well but x y distance is now change okay we are not moving x we are not moving y instead we are moving directly some distance r from the center so we can say that this r is nothing but under root of x square plus y square or this distance x might be r cos phi and this distance y might be r sin phi okay or phi angle might be tan inverse y over x this is how we are moving towards our point okay so we are not traveling x we are not traveling y we are traveling from o to a directly with the distance x so that's uh, the distance r so this distance r is basically x and y both we have traveled we can write this to be like this okay now just see we can represent unit vector r in the increasing r direction okay similarly how phi we are traveling we are traveling phi from positive x direction so we have some phi in this way like this unit vector phi will be there in the increasing phi direction so just see i have represented unit vector phi as well and unit vector z will be there in the increasing z direction so increasing z direction is this direction so in this way point is represented with r phi and z variables and the unit vectors heading will be like this unit vector r unit vector phi unit vector z okay now just see what we can do further here what we can do here if i draw a circle like this here just a second
सो आई कैन रिप्रेजेंट अ सर्किल हेयर इन दिस वे ओके जस्सी this this uh, point this distance that we have travel in which and which we are calling oa okay just see if we keep on following our point it is uh, in 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 phi direction okay from this positive x axis it will trace a circle like this okay it will trace a circle like this so just see what we have done if we keep on increasing that phi value in the direction of the foot of perpendicular of phi we will trace a circle like this okay whose radius will be constant whose radius is constant like this we have, we will trace some circle of radius r in this way okay now if we suppose just keep on putting some circles like this and we are moving we are adding some height to this circle okay then what will happen just see this is how we will represent we will be representing this just see just a second okay no problem so just see if we keep on adding this circles like this we will get a cylindrical type of structure okay we will get a cylindrical type of structure we have given some height to this cylinder as well okay we have given some height to this cylinder as well and this is our point which we are representing okay we this is the point that we are representing so this is again the radius of the circle okay just see in this way so what we have done here just see we can frame a circle like this i hope this is clear to everyone okay this circle is very much visible to everyone so just see we have created a cylindrical type of structure around this point in this way okay we have travel some distance r for reaching from o to a point o a point is the foot of perpendicular okay we have moved some angle phi from the positive x axis in this way we can trace a circle type of structure if we just keep on adding some circles like this means we are giving some height to the point okay then what will be getting we will be getting some cylindrical type of structure like this okay we will be getting some cylindrical type of structure like this just see the cylindrical type of structure is what we are getting here okay now in this cylindrical type of structure if you see we have some values what we are getting here just see we have given some height we have given some height to this particular cylindrical structure so just see this top surface and this bottom surface on the bottom surface okay on this bottom surface we have z equals to 0 on this top surface we have z equals to let us suppose that we have given some distance z equals to a so if you look into the top surface and the bottom surface on the top and the bottom surface what do we have okay so on top and bottom surface we have something called as z equals to constant okay so we have top surface and we have bottom surface so if we talk about the top surface okay so just see on the top surface on the top surface we have z equals to constant value on the lower surface we have z equals to zero value which is a constant value we have z equals to a which is also a constant value so if we talk about top 
or bottom surface okay if we talk about top or bottom surface of this cylinder top and bottom surface means z will be constant okay top and bottom surface means z will be constant okay now just see this outer periphery of this cylinder on the outer periphery what is constant if you are traveling on the outer periphery of the cylinder radius is constant isn't it radius is not changing so if we look into this outer periphery okay or which we can call the curved surface so on this curved surface what is not changing r so in this curved surface we are having r equals to constant okay and just have a look into this particular surface as well just have a look into this particular surface okay just have a look into this surface on this surface what we are getting so this particular slice that we are having it is at a fixed value of phi isn't it if you are moving towards the another slice your phi value will be changing but on this particular slice what we are having on this slice which we are mentioning here it is at a fixed value of phi so when you are on this particular surface you are having phi equals to constant so there are three surfaces z equals to constant representing the top and bottom surface the curved surface that we have is the outer periphery of the cylinder on which we are having r equals to constant and just have a look on this particular slice that is mentioned here in this particular size it is at a particular phi okay every slice will be a particular uh, will be at a particular phi so we will be having phi equals to constant okay now whenever we are in top surface or bottom surface what are the what are the unit vector normal to it either it will be plus uh, uh, unit vector z or it, it will be minus unit vector z okay so on this top surface and bottom surface we will be having unit vector z which will be normal to this particular surface whenever you are on the curved surface what will be the unit vector normal to it the unit vector normal to it will be unit vector r just see the curved surface okay increasing r direction unit vector r will be the normal vector whenever you are in this phi surface representing phi phi equals to constant surface representing phi equals to constant will be having unit vector phi normal to it now plus or minus it depends how we are taking it if you are taking outward plus if you are taking inward it will be minus okay so what i was saying any point in any coordinate system is intersection of three surfaces in x y z we play in x y z or cartesian coordinate system we have seen the, those three surfaces what are the three surfaces here the three surfaces the three variables are r phi and z the three surfaces are r equals to constant okay which is the curved surface of the cylinder top and bottom surface representing z equals to constant the top surface and bottom surface one value is fixed if you are on the bottom surface like we have here z will be zero on top surface z is equals to a now instead of this this bottom surface is right now located at this origin it may get some lower value at as well so this bottom surface will be at some z equals to negative value as well this is also possible but one thing that we are having fixed here on this top and bottom circular surface z value is fixed when you are fixing the value of z then only you are getting this okay radius is varying phi is varying and this is how you are tracing this circular path okay then we have the curved surface now curved surface is the outer periphery of the cylinder when you will get outer periphery of the cylinder that means you are traveling on the outer periphery that means you are traveling at some distance which is fixed from the origin means the radius radius is constant r equals to constant okay then if suppose you are taking this slice like this so this slice that we have taken here is at an angle phi from the positive x axis and that angle is fixed this represent phi equals to constant surface okay whichever variable is constant the unit vector normal to it will be the same variable okay z equals to constant will be having unit vector z constant 
यूनिट वेक्टर जेड नॉर्मल टू दिस प्लेन कर्व सरफेस आर इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट यूनिट वेक्टर नॉर्मल टू दिस सरफेस विल बी यूनिट वेक्टर आर फाइव इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट यूनिट वेक्टर नॉर्मल टू दिस सर्फेस विल बी यूनिट वेक्टर फाइव सो इन दिस वे वी रिप्रेजेंट एनी पॉइंट इन सिलेंड्रिकल कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द रिलेशन ऑफ सिलेंड्रिकल एंड कार्टिशियन कॉर्डिनेट वेरिएबल सो जस्ट सी आर इज इक्वल टू अंडर रूड एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर एक्स इज इक्वल टू आर कॉस फाइव वाई इज इक्वल टू आर साइन फाइव एंड फाइव इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स वाई ओवर एक्स एंड जेड इज द सेम थिंग इन बोथ द कॉर्डिनेट ओके जेड इज द सेम थिंग इन बोथ द कॉर्डिनेट हाउ आई एम सींग दिस If you have not understood, just see x, y, and z. Okay. Now, sir, so just see. This was my point. I have drawn the foot of perpendicular. Then I have traveled from origin to this foot of perpendicular by traveling a distance r. Okay. And this is how I have avoided traveling this x. I have avoided traveling this y distances, which I was traveling in Cartesian coordinate system. and i have moved an angle phi from positive x direction so this is my x and this is my y now just tell me this in this right angle triangle what is the value of x r cos phi what is the value of y r sin phi what is the value of phi tan inverse phi over x then what will be x what will be r under root x square plus y square this is how we can derive relation between them okay so this is how we'll be representing a cartesian cylindrical coordinate system now again just see so this is our cylindrical system okay we were here at this point let us suppose this point is p p and now we are moving towards a point q okay so first of all we will draw the foot of perpendicular of both these points in xy plane this is our xy plane so we will draw the foot of perpendicular of this these points on the xy plane so these are the foot of perpendicular now we will travel towards this foot of perpendicular by traveling these distances okay these distances are basically r distances by making some angle phi1 from here and then phi2 for this particular surface okay so how much is the angle difference this angle difference that we have will be d phi yes or no and what is this curvature what is this curvature so this curvature is basically r d phi yes or no isn't it for point p we are at angle phi1 from from the positive x axis for point q we are at an angle phi2 from positive x axis so what is the angle difference d phi and what is this distance from for reaching to this point we have traveled r for reaching to this point again we have traveled r okay so what is this rate uh, curvature this curvature will be having a length of r d phi okay i hope this is clear okay this is one flake that we have this is the another flake or slice we have okay so just see all the surfaces are involved here if i draw this situation here just see so i am moving some distance this distance is r d phi isn't it first i was at point p and then i have moved to the point q in this way okay so if i have moved from point p to point q there are three surfaces which will be intersecting the surfaces are r equals to constant the curved surface or outer surface the surface phi equals to constant representing any particular slice z equals to constant representing the top and bottom surfaces of the circular surface of the cylinder okay so just see if this situation i'll plot here you can imagine this kind of figure so if suppose i am moving from point p to point q okay if i am moving from point p to point q how much will be the change from point p to point q at point p my coordinates were r phi and z at point q my coordinates are r plus dr i have moved some distance dr in the radial direction i have moved some distance d phi in the phi direction and i have moved some distance z in the dz direction okay so if i am moving from point q, p to q this is how r phi and z are changing dr d phi and dz are the changes okay so if i talk about how much differential length i have traveled okay how much differential length i have traveled so just see 
while moving from point P to point Q, the this differential length will be the same. In the R direction, I am I am I am moving some change of dr, isn't it? I am moving some change of dr. Just see this change. Okay, I am moving some change dr while traveling in the uh, phi direction. How much is the change I have noticed here? So this is the change r d phi, isn't it? Just see, in the phi direction, what will be the change? In the phi direction, the total change will be, the differential change will be r d phi, isn't it? This curvature. And if I talk about in the z direction, so in the z direction, what, how much I have changed? In the z, z direction, this is the change that I will be having, which is d z, okay? Which is d z. So if I have to write the differential length vector, how I will be writing the differential length vector. So the differential length vector will be that I have moved some distance dr, okay, and in the phi direction I have moved some distance kind following the curvature r d phi in the phi direction, okay, and I have moved some distance z dz in the z direction. This is how I will be writing my differential length vector, okay. Following this, what will be the volume vector? Just simply multiply these three distances. So what are the three distances? dr, r, d phi and dz. So what you will get? r, dr, d phi and dz. This will be my volume. Now how I will write the surfaces? And there lies a challenge. So just uh, try to understand how I am writing the surfaces. Just see this surface, okay? Just see this surface. Can you see this surface, this outer surface that we have? And now can you tell me on this outer surface, on this outer surface which you can see here, this particular surface I am talking about, okay? Let me use different color. So I am talking about this particular surface. Just, just have a look into this surface. So if you look into this surface, okay? Just see, top face and we will be having some bottom face as well, okay. This is the top face and it will be the bottom face of it. Just see, top face and the bottom face. So if we talk about this surface, just see these two surfaces. What is the unit vector normal to this surface? The unit vector normal to this surface will be what? The unit vector normal to this surface will be the unit vector R, okay. For the top surface and for the bottom surface, it will be plus minus ir okay we can call it not top and bottom front and back so for the front face it will be unit vector r for the ba back face it will be minus unit vector r okay so just see the red portion which we have mentioned these four surfaces the unit vector normal will be this now if you see this rectangular surface what are the two arms that we have so if we just see this red surface which i have marked there the two arms are r d phi and dz Okay, so let me write here, R, D, phi and D, Z. This will be the first surface vector, area vector. What is this representing? It is representing R equals to constant surface. Okay, this is representing R equals to constant surface or we can say the curved surface. Okay, this is representing the curved surface or R equals to constant surface which is the outer periphery of the cylinder. I hope this is clear, okay. Now see the second surface. Now see the second surface. So let me choose another color. So now what color we can choose here? Uh, let me choose the blue one, okay. So if suppose I am choosing this surface, is it visible? The blue color is visible? Tell me guys, the blue color is visible to you all? Whether this blue color is visible here? Okay, yes, I hope it is. So just see, this blue color surfaces, can you see these two surfaces? Okay, this is the front face and we will be having the back face as well. 
Now on this surface, if you see, on this surface, what you are getting here? On this surface, whether the front face or the back face, what is the unit vector? The unit vector will be unit vector r. Sorry, unit vector phi. Isn't it? The front face or the back face. For these surfaces, we will be having unit vector phi. For if, if we talk about this front face, minus unit vector phi will be the normal vector. If we talk about the back face, plus unit vector phi will be the normal to the surface. Okay, the blue for the blue ones. And what are the two distances that we are having here? Two arms that we are having. So we have dr, okay. We have dr here. And the uh, another arm is what? Can you see two arms here? So the two arms are dr and this height. So this height will be dz. So we are having dr and dz. Okay. And we can write plus minus. So instead of writing plus minus here, you write, try to write plus minus in this side. So unit vector dr dz, unit vector phi. And what it represent? It represent something call, called as phi equals to constant. Phi equals to constant surface. Okay. It is representing phi equals to constant surface. Now, how to write the third vector? So, just see how to write the third area vector, third surface. So, if I talk about the third surface, just see guys, the third surface is this top surface that we have and bottom surface. So, this is the top surface. Okay. And this is the bottom surface that we have. So, this top and bottom surface. On the top surface, what is the unit vector normal? It is unit vector z. On the bottom surface, the unit vector normal will be minus unit vector z. So I will be writing here plus minus unit vector z. And for this surface, can you tell me what are the two arms? So just see, one arm is r d phi and other arm is dr. So we will be writing r dr d phi here. Okay. And what is this? This represent z equals to constant surface. Z equals to constant means the top and bottom surface of the cylinder. So, this is how you will be writing the three vectors, okay, three area vectors, three surfaces. This is how you will be writing the differential length. You need to practice to write all those things. If you have understood how to write all those things, you can solve the problems of surface integral. You can solve the problem of divergence theorem, Stokes theorem very easily. And electrostatic, magnetostatic, everything will become very, very easy for you, okay. So, you need to practice how we are writing all those things, okay. So, this is what we have in cylindrical coordinate system, okay. So, what we have learned in cylindrical coordinate system that we have three surfaces, R equals to constant, the curved surface or we can call it outer periphery and we have phi equals to constant, any slice z equals to constant, z equals to constant means top and bottom circular surface, okay, top and bottom circular surface, any distance differential length will be represented by dr unit vector r plus r d phi unit vector phi plus dz unit vector z. Any differential volume will be just multiply these three length, okay. So, dr, then you will multiply r d phi, then you will multiply dz. And if you have to write vector, you have seen how we have written the vector by looking into the figure. You can practice to write them how I am going to do it right now. Just see, multiply these two, r, multiply these two. So, first multiply dr then multiply d phi, okay. Now you have chosen these two, so the unit vector normal you will be choosing is unit vector z, okay. Other way is, now leave it, so you are leaving it, so write its unit vector here. Multiply other two, so r d phi and dz is what you are multiplying. Then just uh, leave this one, okay. Just leave this one, so you are leaving this one. So, you can write i phi here. Now, multiply the lengths of other two. So, you are multiplying dr and dz like this. 
Now what is this representing? When you are taking unit vector z, it is representing z equals to constant surface or top or we can say the bottom surface. Okay. Now when you are writing unit vector r means r equals to constant surface. r equals to constant surface means the curved surface the curved surface when you are writing unit vector phi means the phi equals to constant means any slice okay so phi equals to constant surface this is how you will be writing the area vector okay now suppose if you have to find the area of any particular surface then what you will be doing if suppose you have to find the area of any particular surface you will be doing the surface integral okay you will be doing the surface integral and this is how you can calculate the area of any of the surface okay under one particular limit or the complete area this is how you will be doing the things so this is all about the cylindrical coordinate system so what we have seen any point r phi z might be represented by the intersection of three mutually orthogonal surface these surfaces are circular cylinder of radius r equals to constant okay plane phi equals to constant made by shifting x z plane by angle phi from y equals to zero plane okay z equals to constant plane and the three unit vectors are r phi and z okay and any vector if you want to represent in cylindrical coordinate system you can represent it by a r unit vector r a phi unit vector phi and a z and this is what we have seen how to represent a point okay so we have three surfaces we have three surfaces what are the three surfaces top and bottom surfaces are z equals to constant surface okay top and bottom surface are z equals to constant surface if you are taking this particular slice it will represent phi equals to constant surface and we have the outer periphery or curved surface okay so this curved surface that we have is representing what r equals to constant so this is how we can draw the three surfaces and three surfaces when they are intersecting they are giving a representation of a point in cylindrical coordinate system like this okay so i hope you guys have understood cartesian and cylindrical coordinate system and how they are evolving okay what is the need of them you may represent any point by using any coordinate system of your choice one problem in one coordinate system might be very easy in other coordinate system it depends on our choice what we are choosing okay so this is the end of this lecture guys if you are really liking the teaching and learning methodologies of ims gate academy just join ims gate academy because we are offering some excellent content okay and we are offering some good practice in teaching and learning methodology so we are offering you 800 plus hours of live classes with live interaction we are giving you theory book exercise book that contains almost 4000 plus questions as well we are offering you 34 plus years of gate question bank with video solution and gate is a long journey okay so you need constant motivation so we are offering you personalized one to one mentorship session in which you can discuss with us all along your journey of preparation that what should be the preparation strategy how to plan the core subject non core subject how to plan test series revision and everything and we are offering 130 plus online test as well so you can check your performance in the meanwhile while uh, practicing any subject okay so this is what we are offering so you can call on this number and you can book a free counseling session so this is all about this lecture you will get the we uh, pdf of this lecture in the telegram group the link is given in the description box so just join the telegram group first of all okay and then today we have discussed cartesian and cylindrical coordinate system we will meet in the next lecture lecture number 3 which will be the coordinate system part 2 we will discuss spherical coordinate system and we will discuss the relationship between these three coordinate systems as well i hope that you people are getting much benefit from this foundation series the purpose of this foundation series is to make a strong foundation for you guys 
so that you can not only conquer this subject and even this will form, uh, form a base for you and you will be able to perform well in other subjects because fundamentals are covered in these foundation courses and this is how you will be able to perform very well in the ultimately in the gate exam as well. So the final result will be very good. So thank you so much for attending this class, watching this video. Okay, thank you so much. We will meet in the next class of coordinate system part 2. Thank you so much.